Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to be drawing uh, basically a, a coloring book page that you can color however you'd like. So I have my sample right here. It's a cat looking out the window. Um, you can use anything to color it. Markers, colored pencils, crayons, anything like that. I used a combination. Uh, let's see, let me get this set up for just a second. Um, it looks a lot harder than it is. This one's actually not very hard at all. It's just a lot of steps. So let me know if you guys have any questions um, in the comments as we go along. All right, what you're going to need supplies-wise is you are going to need uh, a piece of printer paper. I am using a clipboard so that my colors don't bleed through. It's totally up to you, though. Uh, if you don't need to do that, that's fine. You're also going to need a pencil, an eraser, a sharpie, or a fine point uh, black marker or black pen, something like that, and then a ruler. Um, I have a pretty long ruler. You don't need an 18-inch ruler. A small one will be just fine. Um, in addition to that, you're going to need something to color with. So I am going to use colored pencils and markers. You can use crayons. You can use thicker paper and then do watercolor. It's totally up to you. All right, here we go. So I have my ruler. Uh, our first step for our DIY <laughs> coloring book page is you need to make a window frame for your cat to sit in. Uh, we do need space at the bottom though for the cat's tail. So you are just using your, uh, your ruler to make uh, a box, basically. All right, let's see. So I'm making a line kind of towards the top with my pencil. I like that right there. Do it longer. It's okay if it's not perfect. Oh. Let's see, that's hard to see, isn't it? Here, let me make that a little bit darker. You will be making your lines light because a lot of these lines will have to be erased. Okay, so even though I'm going to be uh, making dark pencil marks, try to use light pencil marks so they're easier to erase. Right now I turned my page so that I can make a line this way. Maybe I'll make my window frame... Mm, five or six inches long. I'll go down to six. It's totally up to you. You can have a big window. You can make a small window. Your choice. Now I'm doing the bottom of my window frame. I just drew another, another line across. And then I'm connecting on this side. All right, so see my line was a little too long right there. I'll just erase it a little, no problem. Now I have a window frame right there. Perfect, okay, so the next thing you're going to need to do is uh, you're going to want to make the cross bars of the window frame. So see here how I have a dark line there and a line that way. Uh, again, do this one lightly so that you can erase it. So I'm finding about the halfway point. It doesn't have to be exact. And I'm drawing a line across. Like that. Okay, now I'm making a line vertically about halfway this way. And if I'm going too fast for you, you can always pause the video, no problem. And see, my line isn't quite in the middle. Looks like I made this side a little bit bigger. That's okay. If you do that, you can always erase, or you can leave it if you don't mind it. This is why we draw lightly, so that we can erase it easily. There we go. So maybe I'll move it over just a little bit. Like, 
about right there. That's a lot better. Okay. Now, I am going to add the curtains next, just so I know how much space I have to do my cat. So your curtains, you're going to start at the top, not in the center right there, but maybe over an inch or so, and you are making a big swoop down here to the bottom, like this. That's a big draping curtain. Okay, just like that. And then we'll try to make it look the same on the other side. So about an inch to the left of that center line. And if they're not exact, you can always fix them. Or maybe you don't care if they're exact or not. We go fix this one. I'll make it a little bit more drooped. Totally up to you. This is why we draw lightly so that we can erase. Now, I need to get rid of some of the window lines that will be behind the curtains. So this line right here, I can get rid of this one. See, now it's behind the curtain. Same with this side. There we go. That's behind the curtain. Uh, now I'm going to do the bottom part of the curtain. So I'm putting my pencil right here where the curtain met the window. And I am making a not so straight line all the way to the bottom of my page. You don't want it to be too straight because you want it to uh, look like it's hang, hanging fabric. Now I'm going to put my pencil about right here. And I'm doing the same thing all the way down. A little wiggly on purpose. Okay, and then I'm going to go over to this side and do the same thing. Kind of wiggly line all the way down. Put my pencil about right here. And wiggly line all the way down. And like I said, if you need to pause the video because I'm going too fast, no problem. Go ahead and pause it. Take your time. Now I'm going to go in and erase the lines that fall behind this portion of the curtain. So I don't need this line. And I don't need this line because these are the lines for the window frame and our curtain is covering those. All right, now I'm going to go to the top of my curtains. And if you have curtains, you may notice they don't go straight across. They're a little bit wiggly on the top like this because they are gathered. So make yourself a nice wiggly line stop at the end right there and then i'm going to make another kind of wavy line down i'm going to go in and erase the straight window marks I'm erasing the straight window marks and leaving the wiggly lines. If you don't get the straight marks all the way off, that's okay. We're going to be erasing uh, more in just a bit. Okay, there we go. Now I'm doing the same thing on this side. So I'm starting at the top of my curtains. And I'm doing a wiggly line all the way across like that. And then I'm doing a slightly wiggly line all the way down to right here, where the curtains are gathered. Again, I am going to erase the straight lines. And if you don't get them all the way erased, that is okay. All right. There we go. So right now we have our 
curtains, they're almost done. Uh, we just need to add some lines to show the folds on the curtains. So, I'm going to add about three lines on each side. You can start at the top and do a line, a curved line all the way to the bottom, or almost all the way. You can start at the bottom and do a curved line up to the top. Or you can just do a little line right in the middle. Or a combination of all of them. So maybe I'll do a curved line here. One that goes all the way. And a little one. And it looks like we have folds in the top up here of our curtains. Now I'm going to do uh, at least one fold line on the bottom part too. It's just kind of a wiggly straight line that goes down to show that this fabric is folded. Maybe I'll do two folds on this side. There we go. All right, so our curtains are ready to go. Those are done. Now, we're going to move on to the cat. It's not as hard as it looks. I actually have a really easy technique for drawing the cat. You just have to know how to draw a number eight. So I'm going to find where I want my cat to be sitting. Uh, I think I want my cat on this side. You can choose anywhere in your window frame. And I'm going to start at the bottom, and I'm drawing a figure eight. Uh, you're going to want your figure eight to be fatter at the bottom than at the top, uh, so that you get a smaller head and a bigger body. And if it takes you a few tries, that's totally fine. It might take me a few tries, too. Okay, I drew a figure eight. Smaller on the top, bigger on the bottom, okay? And the bottom of the cat is sitting on the windowsill. You don't want your cat floating, then it will look like it's sitting in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so you want it on the windowsill like that. Now, to turn this into a cat shape, we just need to add a neck. So I'm adding a little neck right there. See, I added a curved line there. And I'm going to add a curved line here. Okay, so now we have a head, a neck, and a body. And then I'm adding two pointy ears. Two pointy ears like that. Now you need a tail. Now, if you see the sample that I did, my tail makes sort of a fish hook curve. You can make your tail however you'd like. It can be wiggly, straight, whatever you'd like. Um, I'm going to go like this. And then go just right back and trace the same thing you just did. So you make one curved line and then go back and draw it right next to it. Now I just need to get rid of the X right here on the neck. And if you have any window lines showing, go ahead and erase those. Now, like I said, if you don't get all of the pencil lines erased now, that's okay. We'll do it a little bit later. We'll fix it up. Uh, now you get to decide what you want in the background of your picture. Now, I just did like a, a sunset with markers and I drew flowers. You can do something simple like that. You can draw trees. You can do a beach scene. You can I mean, any, anything you want. Um, let's see, what will I draw? I think I'm going to draw a, a beach scene instead. So I'm going to need a horizon line. So the horizon line is where the sky meets the land. And I'm going to make that lower than this crossbar on my window. Um, maybe about right here. And it's a straight line. I'm using my ruler. And I'm doing a straight line all the way across. So now everything above this line is going to be sky. Everything below will be land. Uh, to make my, my beach, I'm going to put my pencil on this side somewhere. And I'm just making a wiggly line all the way across for the water. It's going through the cat's head, so you can either lightly draw the line through so you know where it connects, or just put your pencil on this side and continue. 
right, like a wiggly line like that. Now, I just have to remember when I color that this is ocean here, and from here up is sky. So I know what color to do all of that. Um, let's see. Anything else we need to add? I don't think so. I think we're good. If you want to add any trees, you can add trees here. Um, if you want your cat to be looking out at something where there would be grass, or if you have any sort of land showing, I would add the horizon line. Just so the land doesn't go on forever. <laughs> so it's not all grass. Totally up to you, though. Um, now I'm going to take my Sharpie. I have the the ultra fine point one. I think it's a little bit uh, easier because it's not it's not so the tip isn't so fat. Uh, my markers are a little messy, so we'll see if it gets on my paper. <laughs> uh, what we're doing now is you are tracing every pencil line that you want to stay. Okay, so I'm going to start with my cat. And I am outlining my cat in black Sharpie because we're basically making a coloring book page. There, I outlined my cat. Now I'm going to outline my curtains. Line the lines in the middle. And here we go. Outlining the curtains down here. If you use a fatter marker, that's totally fine too. Um, it'll just have thicker lines, whatever your preference is. Okay, now I'm moving over to this side, outlining this curtain. So our cat is sitting inside, looking out the window, and you can put anything you want in that window, whatever you think your cat should be looking at. And if you don't trace your lines exactly, um, where the pencil is, that's okay, because we're erasing the pencil anyways. That's why I'm going a little bit fast. If I'm going too fast for you, go ahead and pause your video, that's alright. Now, the tricky part is, when we trace the straight lines, we're going to want to use our ruler. But you don't want to draw through things are that are closest to you, like the cat. I don't want to draw my windowsill through the cat's tail that wouldn't look right. So go nice and slow when you're tracing and make sure you stop on one side of the cat and continue on the other side like that. Same thing with the uh, all of the window lines. So up here or the top of our window starts there and ends there. Here's our center window line. Starts on that side it's right over here. Okay. Now all I have left uh, is my vertical window line. Okay, so this goes all the way through. Now I have my horizon line and the waves on the beach. Uh, remember, you don't want to draw the line through the cat's head because that would mean that the beach waves are in front of your, or closer to you than the cat is, which wouldn't make sense. So I'm going to use my, uh, my ruler for the horizon line right here. Again, this is where the ocean meets the sky. Okay. And then now I'm doing my waves. Remember to stop on the edge of the cat so you don't go through its head. Okay, there we go. Now, like I said, if I'm going too fast, go ahead and pause it so you can get caught up. Uh, right now, I'm going to go through and erase any uh, pencil lines that are in the way. Okay, so if you don't like your pencil lines, 
Go ahead and erase those now so you have a nice clean page to color. And then when you are ready to color, like I said, you can use markers, colored pencils, crayons. I think that colored pencils look the nicest, um, but maybe you'll want to use markers on the sky, since there's a lot of space to cover. Uh, on my sample, I used markers on the sky because I didn't want to have to color that whole sky with colored pencil. But as you can see, it's hard to blend marker colors. So if you want to do markers, that's totally fine. Just know that they won't blend as, as well as we'd like them to, but that's okay. Um, otherwise, you can use colored pencils, which always look really nice. Um, you can use crayons. Those are pretty quick. Just about done. Let's see. Oh. I chose to make uh, my sample cat orange because I have an orange cat. You can make your cat whatever color you'd like. You can make it black, gray, whatever. Um, if you decide that you want to do just a pretty sky and flowers, like I did over here, uh, I started with the middle. I did a circle, and then I just added petals all the way around, and then a curved stem. And I also traced that in Sharpie. Uh, for the sky, I just... it's there's nothing drawn, I just colored it with markers. So you can do something like that if that's what you'd like. So that's probably about as much pencil as I want to erase. Uh, you can go in and make sure that all of your pencil is completely erased. That's totally up to you. Um, but I feel like I'm ready to color. So let's see. I remember I told myself I had to keep in mind that from this line up was the sky and from here to here is the water and then here's the sand. So let's see, maybe I will do, I think I'm going to do marker for the water because I want a nice bright blue. So I'm just going to start by outlining this top right here so I know where to stop. And maybe I'll outline down here too, just so I know where to... Uh, stop my marker. Um, if you outline it all the way around, then it, you're less likely to get marker on other things like your cat. <laughs> if you want to take the time to use colored pencil and make this look really nice, you can do that too. All right, now when, when coloring anything in the background, I usually like to color horizontally. That means my lines go this way, back and forth. When I color the curtains, my lines will go vertically, up and down. Filling it in. See, with markers, you're going to get some streaks, unless you're using high end artist markers, but most of us just have uh, something like Crayola markers, so. That is totally fine. You'll just get a little bit of streaking, which is fine. All right. There we go. 
So my ocean is done. Let's see. I think I'm going to do my sky. Hmm. What color should I do in my sky? Let's see. I want my sky a little bit lighter than the ocean. So I'm going to use this. This is a seafoam green for my sky because I just want it light. It's a little bit greenish, but that's okay. Tracing it all the way around. You know what? Before I trace all the way, I just decided maybe I want to add a cloud. And I can do that with my marker. Um, I'm just going to start about right here. I just make little bumps all the way around. Now this is my new line I need to follow when I'm coloring. So I'm not tracing the curtain right there with my color. Um, it would put a weird bluish green line through our cloud, which would look funny. <laughs> Maybe I'll do another little cloud right here, though. Just like that. Now I just color around them. And as you notice, I hold my marker a little bit to the side um, so that I can have a broader side of the marker when I'm coloring. Uh, it makes it faster because if you hold your marker up and down, you get a little line like that. If you hold it to the side, you get a big line like that. And coloring goes by a lot faster. So while I'm coloring this, I'll tell you guys why I chose to do this art lesson today. Um, it's my mother-in-law's birthday. Happy birthday, Chris. And she really likes cats. So I've actually shown her how to do this drawing before, um, but I figured I'd make a video and show it to her again because she really liked it. guys colored. Uh, let's see. Now if I had a tan color, I might do my sand with tan, but I don't, which is fine. Um, instead, let's see, what else can I color? I think I'll color my curtains. Uh, maybe a nice lavender color. Okay, so I have a light purple. I'm just going to color my curtains. Again, I'm outlining them. so that I color within the lines. Now the more you color over one spot, the darker that spot will get because we're using markers. Um, and I kind of want these creases to be darker, so I'm going to trace them again with this marker. That way when I color over them again, maybe they'll look a little bit darker and everything else around it. Maybe they won't, but we'll see. As you can see, I'm not coloring horizontally like I did with the background. Instead, I'm coloring kind of vertically, but also at a, at a curve since that's how my curtains are. Turned out a little bit darker than I was picturing, but that's all right. If you don't like it, 
If you don't like yours, you can always do it again. So when I did my sample, I did it totally different than this one. I have a different background, different colors. So you can make a second one if you don't like your first one. Or you can just take the figure eight idea for drawing your cat and make another drawing out of that. I'm actually going to turn this upside down so that I can color this side a little bit easier. So that's one technique if you are trying to draw or color and you're having a hard time, turn it upside down. Again, I'm outlining everything. And then I'm going in and coloring. And I try to use as much of the flat side of my marker as possible. It means less time spent filling this in. And see, I am getting a lot of streaks, and that's all right. We're just making art with what we have. Okay, one more spot on the curtain. So I'm still thinking uh, what color, thinking about what color I should make the cat. I'm on the fence. Um, I was thinking maybe gray. Otherwise, maybe you could do your cat black, and it's either a black cat or it's a silhouette of a cat. Either one would be cute. All right. So I'm going to go back and fill in any white spots. gray, which I do. I can make my cat gray. Oh, cute. I'm outlining my cat. Oh, I'm nicely drawn within the lines. Now, see, on the gray, maybe I can go back in and add some darker spots just by coloring over it again. And then it will look like the pattern on the cat. I'm just doing little scribbles. Maybe I'll do some stripes on the tail. There, cute. That looks like my cat's looking out the window. Now I have one more thing I need to color, and it is the sand. I am going to switch to colored pencil for this, uh, because I don't have a tan marker. I only have brown. Uh, so I have a tan colored pencil, and I'm just going to fill this in. Um, I'm coloring horizontally again. Because that will look nice with my background. This is where you can add details. If you want, if you want to draw stuff in the sand, like uh, buckets and shovels, beach towels, umbrellas, you can do things like that. Or if you're doing maybe some grass, you can draw flowers. Some draw flowers here, something like that. Maybe you want to add a second cat in your window. You can do that as well. Alright. Just nicely filling in this background. Let's see, there we go. 
all right so i feel like my like my drawing's done um maybe i'll make another one i don't know uh, you can always go back at this point and add extra details if you want to make shadows or things. Um, I just grabbed a darker purple marker. I'll make the lines of my curtains darker. Oh, there. That looks a lot better. There we go. You do that. You can go back in and add more details in your ocean. Maybe I want to make some lines in my ocean like this, like horizontal lines and then squiggly when they get to the beach. These are like the lines in the water that you see. Do something like that. Maybe you want to do another outline on your cat. You can just keep playing with it. Make another one if you want. Totally up to you. All right, I think I'm done. So, thank you for joining me. Side by side here I have our two, the two drawings I've done. Here's my sample one, and I just did this one. Um, as you can see, the colored pencil will be a lot lighter, but it looks really nice. Uh, the marker's faster, so whichever one you'd prefer. Um, so once again, this is Mrs. Nielsen. Uh, happy birthday, Chris. Love you. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions and then post pictures of your artwork in the comments. Thanks. Bye.